Hi teachers, let's talk about classroom management. Nobody gets into education because they want to manage classroom behavior. However, if you don't manage classroom behavior, you won't really be a teacher because you'll spend all your time and energy managing classroom behavior. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Melanie Howell and my advice is based on more than 20 years in classroom teaching. Um, if you're watching this video, maybe you are a college student who is considering education or maybe you're about to go into student teaching and you're looking for some new ideas. Maybe you're a teacher who's currently struggling with some behavior management and you're looking for new ideas. Either way, if you find this video helpful, I hope you will consider subscribing. So let's start with best case scenario. Best case scenario, you're a teacher, let's say in middle school, you've got this big class full of kids, you won't really have to worry too much about classroom behavior if, if you can find the perfect balance of my class is so busy with meaningful, engaging work that the children are anxious to come into my classroom and work on what I want them to work on. I know that sounds like pie in the sky, but it really does happen. It really does happen. Now, that will work with 95% of your class. And I say 95% because there's always that one that for whatever reason, maybe they're on the list to be evaluated. And we all suspect that there's something going on. Maybe they're so impulsive. Maybe they really do have some kind of behavioral disorder. It doesn't matter because the bottom line is the list of children to be evaluated is long and that kid's going to be in your class every day and it's your responsibility to educate that child until he gets the diagnosis and the help that he needs. So what do you do? Truthfully, I become friends with the special ed teacher. I go to that teacher, I, subs I describe the um, behavior that I'm dealing with and I say can you please give me some ideas strategies and that's where your sticker charts and put the fuzzy in the jar and that's where all that kind of stuff comes in but you're not managing your whole class like that you're only having to manage a few kids like that because everybody else is doing busy keeping busy with meaningful engaging work and if they know if you sort of sprinkle on the top they know you actually care about them, it's fine. You really will be fine. Uh, because kids know who really cares and who's just two years from retirement and drawing a check or whatever. You can't fool kids, they know. So if, you're, if your classroom, there's not a lot of downtime, can't be downtime, but if, you, if it's busy and it's engaging and it's meaningful and maybe even there's an authentic audience at the end for some kind of project or something, I don't know. If you've got them so invested in what you're trying to teach them, life in the classroom is pretty awesome. That's when all the fun magic part happens. You'll just love it. And you're only really managing one or two that take a lot of effort. Okay, like I said, that was best case scenario. Okay, so what if your class is busy and they've bought into what you're selling, this, I, whatever it is you're teaching, and they really want to do a good job, but every time they collaborate, they nip at each other and they're mean to each other and put downs and, you know, they're all doing pretty good work and they all are invested, but they just can't be nice to each other. What do you do then? Okay, what I'm about to tell you is not exactly politically correct. So don't, don't send me a bunch of hate email, but this strategy has actually worked for me in the past. So I'm just gonna put it out there. You figure out which kid do all the other kids deem as popular or cool or whatever and you never ignore any child ever you find anything positive you can find about that popular kid and you accentuate it but never suggest um sort of pumping up that popular kid in a teacher's pet kind of way or at the expense of another child this is just like i said something 
that you, the teacher, are consciously working into the casual parts of your day, passing out papers, or even if the only positive thing you can come up with is, hey, Johnny's got his book open and he's on page 75, who else is ready? That kind of casual stuff. Maybe you pull that popular kid aside and you say, look, tomorrow I'm gonna want you to be in a group with so-and-so because I know you can handle it. You'll make sure everything goes okay. And then there's this, oh, wow, she really trusts me with this. If you've built up enough rapport, the popular kid will kind of listen to what you're saying and will uh, maybe stick up for somebody in a small way or, the other kids will see this popular kid being the nice kid. Your, ch your chances are just better if you can get that one kid to do what you want he, him or her to do. I know this sounds terrible, but it does work. It really does work. And when, if you've ever had a class like this and it's just constant yeah, yeah, bickering, You'll get to the point that you'll be ready to try this. You will, you will. All right, but there is a worst case scenario. <laughs> and these are the teachers that go home and sometimes cry and question their decision to even be in education. And that is when the child that all the other children have deemed cool and most popular, when that kid is apathetic or mean or very vocal about how little he or she cares about what's happening in the classroom, that's the kind of scenario they make teacher movies about, all right? That's where you still have to try and get to know that kid, figure out what they like, what they don't like, and try to find something positive to pull out and accentuate about that child. That's when you start really digging in and thinking, okay, to be honest, this is why I got an education to begin with. And it's fun when it's easy and 95% is engaged and the learning is so exciting. But it's also awesome when you do finally reach that one very difficult child and maybe they leave and go on to another school or graduate or whatever, and you don't think about him or her for years, but then somehow they come back and thank you. Let's, I mean, isn't putting others before yourself really what we're all trying to do? Teaching is great. And sometimes we just need a reminder that if it was easy, everybody would do it. All right, that's my rant for today. Like I said, don't send me any evil emails about targeting popular kids. All right, have a great day. Bye.